Heather says hi. She's working some nights right now and I just wanted to have some fun with you. So I'm going to take you on a little tour around the studio and I'm going to explain a little more about what we do and, uh, and what we're going to do. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to create some real easy projects that uh, I'm going to share with you. Uh, I love finding items for a few dollars that are, we can repurpose and or even free and be able to make them come back to life and but make the projects easy. In fashion and upcycling, uh, I love to see something that's you just don't see too often, but yet you can do it yourself and kind of put your own stamp on it. Two years back, this studio used to house uh, quite a few people that would come in, children and adults, and they would create uh, these amazing uh, collaborative art pieces. Recently, uh, we've converted this studio into a fashion house uh, for Heather and I. This used to be an old garage. A good part of my life, I had dozens and dozens of paintings going on at the same time. What I learned through the process is some of the paintings I would spend years going back to, to finish. And I really enjoyed the process, but uh, looking back, there's nothing quite like being able to do something quick and get that wow factor. So this bag, uh, Heather and I found thrifting, oh, a few weeks ago, and I think it was a couple dollars. I just love the shape. And I, I don't know what... I don't know what, uh, if it's from the 60s or 70s, but, or 50s, but it's just kind of unique. And I said to Heather, well, how would you use the bag if you were going to use it the way it zips open? She says, don't worry, I'll find a way. I think, uh, we, w we decided we wanted to be able to turn this into something magical. Because I don't really like the color. And one of our viewers had talked about... Uh, mentioned about using primers because you, you definitely have to use primers on certain certain materials to be able to get the uh, top coat of acrylic to uh, stay on without chipping off. But I love to test the waters and see if you can do this without putting any sealant on. And if it doesn't work, what I'm going to do is we'll we'll go back and I'll show you how to be able to take the paint off easily and be able to put the sealant on. And, and fix it all up. But it's definitely fun to see if a lot of these materials you don't have to. I really enjoy showing you guys all the details on how to make these projects actually really work. So this leather bag uh, I had painted last week uh, uh, showing you how to be able to take this leather bag and, and be able to paint it. Now see these here, these, these imperfections I actually painted over onto the leather. Part of that was, believe it or not, deliberate and it was to be able to show you that if I sand this, will this, this uh, acrylic come off the leather? Because there is no primer on here, not whatsoever. So I'm just showing you these two. So this is a 100 grit sandpaper, and it's a, it's a good piece of sandpaper. It's fairly new. So if I rub this, can you see how the, the acrylic isn't coming off? So if you have what they call tooth, little bumps to your fabric or it's not saw smooth like glass or metal. Glass and metal need special types of primer to be able to get the acrylic to adhere on without it scraping off. Uh, so, but this here, the leather, it is phenomenal. So you don't need any primer. You can just go right with this exterior acrylic paint and you can bend it many times. It's designed for outdoor use. It's not going to crack. One of the reasons it's not going to crack is because you make sure you put it on really thin. Thin coats make these projects amazing. And you can see there's no cracking whatsoever. When I sand it, it doesn't come off. That tells me that if I go ahead and give a light sand to this all over, I'm going to be able to get enough tooth on this material because it does feel like it's got little bumps to it. Uh, then I'll be able to put this acrylic directly on it. So this is my idea. It's actually, we cooperated in an idea here, Heather and I. We found this piece of this carpet here. This uh, is just uh, got a kind of a bumpy material on the back. And love the, love the design. I'm going to take this blue here. 
going to paint the sides and the back side with this. The zipper side, we're going to call that the front side. I'm going to, I'm going to cut out an image so this will fit and then I'm going to glue it on. And we are going to have an amazing new bag and I'm going to find a way to design the inside so when you unzip it you can have a basically a holding area inside here that won't tip sideways when you lift it upward so everything falls out when you zip it out uh, and uh, this is so much fun can't wait to see how it comes so the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that this edging which I want to have on the bottom just overhanging just slightly make sure that it's going straight across then I'm going to go ahead and put my hand right down the, the on top and I want to just kind of feel around the sides like this I just want to see what this image will look like I want to keep their horns on I decided that this this would be the best part of the carpet to put on here I like the form I like where it's positioned so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep my hand on here, just double check. Double checking is the best rule of thumb. And I'm going to just use, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to go to the side, so where it's already flipped over. Just to make sure that if, in case I make a mistake. And I'm just rubbing, this is soft pastel. It, it comes off easily onto the materials, any fabric, and it washes away. So you don't have to worry about the line showing. There. I'll just double check that to make sure I'm okay. I think I am. Like the image, double check down here, make sure it's coming straight across. Then what I can do is just lift this up gently, slide it out, and we have our cutout. Okay, now you can see I just flipped the bag over. I put the carpet upside down, and I'm going to take a fine marker. I'm just going to go ahead and draw in the excess area that I want to cut off. Just want to just outline that. I double check to make sure that I had the horns on. I didn't want to cut off the horns, so make sure when you're deciding what side you want to trim up. This side over here, I already have it. I already have it perfectly in line. As you can see, it didn't need any cutting on this side, and that's where the that's where the horns are. So. I just started really trimming over here. Yeah, you can probably see that. A little bit of that line. Just be able to trim that up with scissors. And I'm going to be good to go. Oh, I just love this. So this fits beautifully. I'm not going to glue this yet. I am going to glue it with fabric glue and I'll put uh, books on top of it to weigh it down to let it dry. But right now I'm going to focus on painting the, other, the back side and the sides. This is a, an exterior paint. It's a velvet finish. It's 100% acrylic. It's just uh, pure blue. This is a formula that I asked for. And anyhow, this I'm just showing you what I'm doing here. I shook it up a little bit and I'm pouring it into this smaller container. All right, so there we go. I have a little bit of white, a little bit of red, and I've got the blue. And I'm going to try to make up color that's similar. This is my first coat, so I don't really, I'm not concerned with matching it up. It's not worth the time to do that. It's just better to get a really thin coat on. You can hair dry it after you get the thin coat on. Real thin. See how I'm zigzagging my brush back and forth? That's the best way to do it. You want it on thin. I know so many people uh, I've had in classes over the years, they just naturally want to put it on thicker to kind of do one coat and be done with it. But, and sometimes that works, but uh, when you're wanting the paint to 
to not come off and to really cure well and even on a painting that you hang on the wall it's nice to have it last right so that's what we would we would kind of promote is making it so that it could last uh, for certain items that are kind of real uh, a lot of times family members would do these paintings for for other family members children for their parents for christmas and you know there's not much better of a gift you can get than a than a painting from your child that's in a frame that will last for centuries. I mean, really, you can pass it down for generations. It's such a cool, cool gift to give somebody. This here, you can see how I'm doing this. I'm gonna go over the edges on the front of it a little bit more too, but just a real quick zigzag. It only takes, I'm showing you the whole thing because I want you to see in reality, rather than cutting the video here, how quick it is to get one coat on. And thin coat around the zipper is super important because you don't want the zipper to not be able to function anymore. And I think I'm gonna do the handle uh, a different color. So I'm gonna leave that until later. And maybe you guys, when this is all done, I think we'll leave the handle up to you, the handle color. So maybe you guys can tell us what you think. There we go. And then just in case, just to make sure that there's nothing showing around the edge, I'll just go ahead and put a little bit of this here. Where the carpet piece will be glued onto. Okay, so now on to the hair drying. Looks like we need to go quite a bit darker here, so I went ahead and just added some more blue into the leftover paint. I'm just going to rub this very thin coat on. I'm going to do three coats because I want to get it on super thin. And so I have to get it darker anyhow, so this is what I'm going to do to start. And as you can see, when you put on a second coat, because the first coat's already worked as a sealant, it allows you to go quicker on your second. So I just rub on that thin coat. Don't worry about all the, like a solid coat. You're just concerned with it being thin, okay? So it's the same thing, just rubbing on the sides. Real thin coat, zigzagging your brush. It's, it's, it's a different thing to kind of get used to going back and forth with a brush, like the way I'm doing. There, and we'll give it another hair dry. If you really wanted to be particular in, in painting this bag, you'd want to allow it to cure in between each layer for two days. Then apply your second and third coat. We're going to apply one more coat on here, a third coat. And I did this all repetitively one after the other, mainly because I'm not too particular with it. I know that a hair dry and then after you hair dry it, as long as you let it cool down so it's not still hot, the paint, uh, when you go to apply your next coat, uh, just wait five minutes and then put on another coat. You can do it that way um, and it holds up fairly well. But if you really wanted to be detailed, detailed oriented, you'd want to let it cure in between layers for two days and then don't use your bag until it's been cured for two days at the end. Okay, that's very important to know, um, regardless of whether you paint it fast or not, uh, because the curing time is really about how it holds up in, 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 with multiple uses and, and outdoors. So I went ahead and I added a little more blue into this leftover paint. I think for the final coat, I'm going to uh, juice it up a little, and we're gonna add a little bit of silver into the blue. So I'm just using blue, straight up blue with silver, which is going to lighten the color a little bit, which is what I want to do, but I want to get a little bit of that metallic feel into it. Uh, I want to make sure that I stir it up real good and let's see how it looks when we put it on. Oh, I like it. I like it. It's beautiful.
See how quick that goes on. I think for now, just because I see a lot of the brown in the actual carpet, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this handle a light buff. Any of the paint that I got on the metal, uh, I'm just going to scrape off later. Just clean it off. It'll come off fairly easily. Right now I just want to make sure that I, I kind of rub at this handle. It's like a rubber handle. Just get a little bit of a tooth to it, so it's not as smooth. And 100 grit sandpaper is fine for this. Wipe that off, the dust off. There. I have a little bit of brown left over that's might have a little bit of the clear coat still in it from the furniture, but I'm not too concerned. It'll give it a little bit of a shine, if anything. And you see how quickly that goes on. It's nice that this handle stays up. It doesn't lean on the blue, so you don't have to worry about paint getting on the blue. So I'm just doing that. I'm going to get a nice thin coat, and then I'll give it a hair dry, and I'll give it another coat. I love blues and browns together. It feels like there, there's always a little baby in this studio line somewhere. Her name's Tiger. She's sweet. She's so loving. She's snoring right now. Okay, I just lied down in a clean cotton shirt. And I'm going to put the bag down on the shirt so I can actually go ahead and glue my fabric on. So I'll show you what I'm going to use. I have fabric fusion glue and I love it. And don't know if it's stuck or not, but I'm going to make sure that I squeeze a nice good thick amount all around the edge, but not too close to the edge. I don't want it to run off the edge. I'm going to do a little extra. Then I'm going to do an X. And I'm going to do a circle right around here. So I want to, because it's a thick carpet material, I want to make sure they have enough glue on, quite a bit. I'm going to get a little closer to the edges now. I hope you can see that. I'll zoom in a little. So you can see that I, I'm about a centimeter away from the edge, about a, a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And then you can see how thick the, the glue is. And all I'm going to do is stick my fabric on top of it. And then we're going to put some books on top. Let it dry in. I really like the look of this. And it fits nicely. Okay, so I'm just going to push down. Hopefully that'll, that'll work out well. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some books on. There's a World Atlas that covers most of it. And let's see. Put a Monet <laughs> and a Van Gogh. <clears throat> I 
how to fly a plane and gardening. That ought to weigh it down. I just went and did a little touch up on the bottom of the bag. It's great to check while it's drying. Many viewers ask us how we store our clothes and and where we store them and we're, we're just trying to get organized ourselves but what we do is these these uh, dressers here for example the bottom one is just filled with sweaters and they're co they're color coordinated the way they're put in each drawer from light to darks and from cool to warm colors and then above we have a selection of pants that are put into these drawers it's amazing how we have so many different locations but this is um, just jackets and skirts uh, that were stored in here and this is all dresses and jackets back here it's we just have clothes everywhere this is ideas for ups, uh, for how they're styling up items here's another location that is filled with oh my goodness it's just incredible how much uh, how much stuff we have in here and the house is the same this is all filled with just just scarves just a two-sided item we found at uh, value village and it's just filled with scarves and then maybe you can see over here but this is just literally all ties We love uh, taking shells that we find at the beach and we actually do little paintings on them. It's, it's a lot of fun. There's some various people that did these little paintings on clamshells and donated them to the studio. And little blocks. Kind of a neat way to be able to take a clamshell and a memory and be able to create an image. We have lots of different little gadgets in here. Just and shoes. <laughs> in the shoe department, it's just amazing how much storage you do need. All the little gadgets. We have so many units filled with that. All these units were found in the refuge. We really utilize them well. These are actually this unit I built. This unit here is actually all repurposed doors that I built. And I, I found a rod and I put the rod in to hang the clothes. And then these are all uh, bifold doors from old homes. And we just use them to rebuild, to, to store lots of shoes. Lots of shoes. This is a pile of clothes that we have. It's just literally for upcycling. So these are projects that we have. So if anyone's wondering, do you, how do you keep up on top of your projects? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to start going through this uh, pile every week. And we'll pick out a few projects just to able to complete to add on to our, our uh, what other what other projects we're working on we just took hooks here with a piece of old board and be able to, to hang up lots of different fashion pieces and back in here Here's, uh, just to give you an idea, this is a pile of clothing. It actually goes quite down quite far. But this is just all materials to be able to upcycle with. And then as you can see, there's just a, a long stretch here of jackets and coats. So this is how we store in the studio over here. We have fibers, and here's an example of, um, we find tea towels and different designs that we might use down the road. 
There's some old pockets. There's a little detail that could be added on. An emblem. And this here is merino wool. And these are just bags of merino wool that have already been cleaned. So Heather will spin this fiber and she will make some new projects with it. Got this dresser today. It was going to the dump tomorrow and we needed more space uh, so we uh, went and picked it up. It was for free. Very excited. It has a little tar on it so I'm just using a blade here and I'm scraping the tar off. And uh, it's got some repairs to be done but it's amazing how quick you can fix up something that's... I think this is from the 70s. Right around that time they, they started mixing in hardwood. They'd have hardwood on three sides. And then they would put a panel, a laminate panel, in the base, and then they would put fiberboard, some sort of fiberboard compressed, basically uh, sawdust, as a board in the back. So now that it's 50 years old, we have to do some repairs to it to be able to bring it back to life. So it's not too hard. Just putting some glue in here where it was broken, and uh, just going to hammer it back together, just like that. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to take my handy dandy nail gun and just pop a few nails in here. One, two. And I just have to tack this one down. Now it's all back together. One, two, three. And a lot of times after many years these handles are loose so I'm just going to tighten them up. Just wanted to show you how quick and easy these repairs are. It only takes seconds to do. And then I'm going to just kind of scrape that a little bit more to make sure all the the uh, tar is off of it. I don't know how tar got on this <laughs> unit, but... And that's about it. And I'm going to... After that I'm going to give it a good washing. So I'm just taking a little bit of... a little bit of uh, washing solution. And I'm just going to let that sit for a day. Stick that in. One more drawer. All right, so I just took some yellow, a little bit of red, and a very small amount of blue, and I made this color up, this acrylic. And I do use exterior acrylic, so I'm not worried about this matching perfectly right now. It is probably need to be a little bit more of a reddish color. I'm gonna rub this out after I put it on. But I just wanted to show you how you can just quickly get a coat on. And I'm gonna, as I said, I'm going to take a rag to this in a little bit. I'll just go ahead and touch up these corners. Just fixing up this edging here. Just immediately taking off the excess acrylic. I want to go with a little bit of a darker on this anyhow, so this is working out great. I just want to seal in the, the bare spots. Of wood. You can see how that looks a little darker. And that's basically what I want because I'm going to match this over here the sleigh bed. So you can always go lighter too, so you never have to worry about reproducing a color when you have these acrylic paints. And they are waterproof, so these exterior acrylics. It's very important to, when we talk about acrylics, talking about something that uh, exterior acrylics, because they, they do have a unique opportunity to be able to make projects real easy. Just taking a little bit of yellow, red, and blue, and some hardwood floor clear coat. I'm not concerned if I get on the hardware. You could go ahead and take the hardware off, but I'm just going to wipe it off each time while the paint's still wet. Just trying to get a little bit of the, this color on here inconsistently. I'm not really thinking too hard. Just wanted to show you how quick and easy you can change up the coloring. There's some knots on the sleigh bed here. 
don't really think too hard. You can, it's only paint. You can always change it up. This is supposed to be fun. So don't worry about too much detail. But I'm missing my rag. Where did I put my rag? It's good to have a rag around you or it's a, it's a towel or something that you can rub out. I just thought I could bring in the detail on the on these uh, pieces here that are uh, carved in. So I could just rub in like that, see? And then I can rub off and then I'll have the dark edges in there. It's kind of neat. And I always, I can tone these knots down later. So we're just trying to, so now I'm just lightening the color a little bit more red and yellow into it. And I'm just going to use, it's almost like a dry brush where you put a very small amount of paint on and you just rub across. You can see the little lines with the one inch brush. Okay. I just want to be inconsistent. I think I might actually want to blend these handles right in. I don't think I like them enough. See, I'm not dipping back into the paint. I'm just kind of rubbing over. And I might kind of break up the little bit of the knots. So this was a pretty quick and easy way to fix this dresser up and make it look pretty good. If you want to make it last, you want to keep it for a long, long time, or you really want to take the time to, to do everything to perfection, you definitely want to strip it down, sand all, all the built-up stains on it, and uh, make sure you're wearing some sort of mask. This top coat will stick pretty good. And I just want to show you what it compares to now, as far as put a little bit of light on it. So you can see the Just, uh, I only run cold water to save energy uh, in the studio, so we do have a little hot water on demand heater we turn on once in a while, but I just keep knocking down the brush, pushing downward direction, and this is a great way to get all the paint out. And then what you do is you just knock it against the side many times and it takes out all the possibly the leftover paint that's built up with the water. But just doing this, pretty good. And if you want to, after you do that, you can take a little bit of detergent, just put it on the bottom of the, of your sink there and then just dot the brush right into the detergent. And it'll just loosen up any of the extra paint and then you can rinse it out again and do the same process. Rinse and then push down pretty hard on your bristles. Not too hard if it's a smaller brush. And then you just knock against the side. That's it. I hope everybody's having a great evening. Just getting ready to go to work so I don't really have time to style things. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? Oh my gosh, I love it. I love the way this turned out, Dave. Absolutely love it. So cool. Well, it's so, I mean, I just love the, the color and with this little picture on the front, the tapestry. Uh, yeah. I mean, oh, and there's cute. so many things I can wear this with, actually. I just love it. And if you guys have an idea of what would be a better color for the, for the handle. Oh, I love this, too. I really like this. It's so cool. It's fun. Yeah. You know? What a great way to kind of change this bag. I mean, the form of it I loved already, and the little handle, but the color I wasn't crazy about, but what a transformation. Awesome. Oh, that's Love great, it. that's great. Thank you. And I just wanted to show you just a couple things that I was really excited about my recent thrift buying. Like you, the one you're wearing? Well, this one, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love that. It is wool and it is really quite warm, but oh, I, I really like it. I mean, I'll be able to wear this a lot, actually. And I did show this in the video, but this was the little jacket. Sangle Lane, Montreal. But I love the 
I just love, I love the color. I love this little detail with the wool. Oh, I do too. And the buttons that are covered. What was the name of the brothers? Was it a brothers? Or? Mill no. Brothers. Mill Brothers? And they, they Mills Brothers. Mills Brothers. And you said you, you looked it up and you thought that it started in 1919. Well, I'm not sure if that's uh, the one okay. I was reading or not, but it was a department store in Nova Scotia. Yeah. yeah. I really love this. It's so cute. And I can see this with, I mean, with so many things. Yeah. A cute little skirt, some tall boots, even jeans. Really love this little piece. This was the corset that Dave painted and then I added this little applique. I've had a few suggestions to pair it with this green jumpsuit and it's so cute. I did try it on. I'll have to uh, show it when I have some time to, uh, to put it on and I'll show you what it looks like. But it's really cool. Really, really neat. Yeah, thank you for the suggestion. Yes, thank That's you. awesome. Really good idea. And this jacket. When I saw it, my mouth just about <laughs> hit the floor. I mean, I just love it. It's corduroy, brown corduroy, little trench coat. The name on it is Blue Marine, made in Italy. Yeah, that's a gorgeous that's jacket. And it's the form so is just soft. amazing. It's just, I, I really love this jacket. I have worn it, I believe, in a video. <laughs> you wanted to show it anyhow. I had yeah, to show it. Yeah, that's awesome. In the back of the I just wanted to talk about these shoes I had painted last week. We had a viewer that asked that the, the strands, they looked a little loose on Heather's feet. And what will we do about that? We, they are a little bit loose, but the paint actually tightens the straps up a little bit. The, the, basically what happens is the moisture that goes out of the paint uh, when it dries it just kind of shrinks it slightly but uh, when, when Heather put these back on they are a little bit large so what I'm going to do for a video upcoming videos I'm going to show how we're going to actually take this we measured measured it out that the straps about a half inch too long so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually um, pull the stitches in here and I'm going to actually take this outside of the the insert where this strap goes through and I'm going to pull it out and then I'm going to reinsert it and glue it and, and press it with uh, fabric glue. I'll show you the little steps yeah. and it's a, it's a pretty simple way to be able to basically make it brand new. Awesome. We're going to do some really neat new projects coming up. Heather's going to get a new painted leather jacket which I think she'll be Ooh. excited about seeing <laughs> when she's sleeping one, uh, one day because she's on another night shift and I'll I'll show you a couple of, and, a, and a way we can actually uh, upcycle a carpet into a vest. So, uh, oh, we'll this is exciting. Wait and see, and we're going to have a, a, lot of, a lot of new projects coming your way. Yes, it's exciting. Okay. I hope you have a wonderful night, everybody. Yes, we love you. Love you. Okay, maybe I have a few minutes for styling. <laughs> <laughs>